Hi, welcome. Today we're just going to have a quick look at exporting an SVG file out of Illustrator and then importing that file into Blender and setting it up ready to do some animation or lighting with. Okay, so first thing we've got a simple logo here that I've created up. Okay, so I built it out of text. First thing you need to do with if you've got text select your text and make sure that you go create outlines. I've already done that with my text. So it's in there, it's a good idea not to have any strokes on your work. Um, just try and have it just fields only, okay? So if I go command Y, it gives me my wireframe in Illustrator. I can see that it's nice clean artwork and there's no extra boxes or squares or anything to make my life complicated. Okay, so what you do is you come down to um, save as and select an SVG, and I've already done a practice one, so I'll just stick it in the same spot. And you want SVG 1.1, um, make sure you've got Preserve Illustrator editing capabilities turned off, because that just complicates the file, and we don't want that, and we're going to go OK. Great, OK, so it's made that SVG file, which is a scalable vector graphic. So I'm going to go to Blender where I've got basically an empty file, but I have got a light and a camera in here, but I've deleted the standard box. And I'm going to go File, Imports, and down to SVG or Scalable Vector Graphics. Okay, so you can see it's got SVG in brackets. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go and select my example um, and click on Import SVG up the top here. Okay, so you can see here on the right, this is my outliner, that it's showing that I've got all these curves here, but it's quite difficult to see. But you'll find, if you zoom right in, that you'll be able to select it. So you can select around it. I'm going to use my B for box select. And I'm also going to transform, and I'm going to move the um, origin to the geometry. Okay, so that brings my arrows across into the middle of this text approx okay so remember it was tiny before so let's scale this up so i'm going to select i can select my scale tool down here but i usually just use my s hot key and start to drag things out i'll roll out a little bit s okay that's good so i'm starting to get it's kind of proportional to my scene. You don't need to worry too much, but you can see mine's about four blocks wider, so look, it doesn't matter. When this comes in, we can see that all these objects are called curves down here on the right-hand side. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is convert these to a mesh because they're a little bit easier to work with. So I'm going to go Object, Convert to Mesh from Curve, okay? So I'll click on that. Good one. And now if I click on one and go into it, we'll see that it is still a curve. That's not good. Okay, so let me just do that again. It seemed a little weird when I was doing it. So let me just select all this. That's good. Okay, just check I've got the right stuff selected here. Yep. Object. Convert to mesh from curve. Okay, it's done now. I don't know why it was misbehaving. Now, when you do this, all the names of these still stay as curves. So it might seem a little weird, but it's totally fine. So I'll just click back on it now. And if I go into edit mode and select all, we can see now that this has been converted to a mesh. And you can see all these sort of telltale triangular shapes and points all over the place. It's a little messy, but, you know, it's pretty good. So I'm going to go back out to object mode for starters and I'm going to join this together in, I might join it in a couple of bits, should I? No, I think I'll just join it all as one for starters. Okay, so I've got that all selected. I'm just going to go object and up to join or control J and it's all joined into one thing. Easy. Okay, so let's get a little bit trickier now. Let's just go Object Transform. We're going to move those rotators in there. So we're going to go, um, it doesn't really matter, but we'll go Origin to Geometry. And I would have expected that to move right down as well. It didn't. 
we won't worry too much. I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees. 90. So it looks like I accidentally had my camera selected as well. That was why it wasn't doing it. So now we're looking good. Let's pull this down a little bit. Okay, so we're starting to get our logo happening. And I'm going to go in and select everything in edit mode. And I might do an extrude. And I'll extrude it out the back to give us a slightly sort of solid finish to this. Okay, so that'll do for starters. I don't want to make it too thick and crazy, but we'll give it a little bit, you know, of a solid look because we are working in 3D and um, that's one of the, you know, things we can do. Okay, so I've got this set up. I'm just going to go back out into object mode. I'm just going to add a mesh and I'll make that a plane, okay, and I'll scale that up so that we've got a bit of a floor that this thing sits on, which is all good. And let's just pop that there. I've just got a, real, a very basic light there, but that will do us for starters. And let's now just start to have a little bit of a look at this. So I'm in cycles, which is where we want to be. Um, it's worth setting that up in your um, startup file if you, you know, like using cycles. So at the moment we're in solid mode, so we're seeing our object solid. Let's flip into rendered mode here for starters, and we can start to get a bit of a look around our scene, and we can start to see we're starting to get there as far as having this thing looking reasonably 3D, guys. Uh, we can move our lights around. So let's go back to solid mode again. It's light, not very you know, super good, but it's all right. That's okay, so just a basic point light. We can select our light. We can change our light. So let's pull this up. Let's change this to the sun lamp. And we can see immediately, as soon as I fire it up, the sun lamp is directional. And it's got this dotted line that tells us the direction that the sun lamp is going in. Okay, so it's going sort of in this direction. That's okay. Let's just go into solid into rendered mode and have a look so it's starting to light things up a little bit and let's just turn it up a little bit and let's click on use nodes and then we can turn the strength up maybe to about three okay so we're starting to get a bit more power happening there so let's select our selected our mesh Let's have a look at this SVG material. Looks a bit on the dodgy side, so let's fix it up a bit. Let's, first thing, maybe let's just lighten this up. Let's push it to, a, say, a blue. That's getting there. And let's change it from a diffuse to something a little bit more exciting. So let's put in a glass material on that. That's good. And our red material, use nodes. And let's maybe change this to an emission. Okay, so it starts to emit some light. And let's turn up how much that's emitting. And you can see now, as we start to have a quick look around this, it's starting to get somewhere. So let's just move this over here. I might scale this floor up a little bit bigger. I'll make sure it's got a material. Let's make it, say, uh, glossy, that'll get things going, and let's go in here and have a look. So, let's just flip it into rendered mode again. Okay, so you can see now that we're starting to get um, a little bit more happening with this, and um, it's really, you know, just the start of where we can go. So, let's have a look at our sun again. Or we could change our world as well. Um, we've had a look at doing that previously um, using a HDR map. So if you want to have a go at getting a bit more complicated with the lighting setup, then yeah, give that give that a go. I think for the moment though, we're looking pretty good as far as a base to get things looking good goes. Let's take this sun and let's turn this up say, to say five just to get us a little bit closer in the region. That's good, okay, 
in our world. Okay, so you can see that it's really like grey at the moment. So maybe let's just add a little bit of white to it. So it's looking a little bit more interesting. There we go. Okay. So that's given us our basic set of glass letters with a glow. So um, we could start to mess about with turning down the light and adding more artificial light sources, or we could add in a HDR map, which we talked about before, and adding in some interesting reflections. You can use whatever textures or shapes you want to, but that's, I think, a good guide just to get you going.